Okay, in this video, we're going to look at driving a LCD display with the Arduino Uno. Now this is the display here. It's a two-line display. It has 16 characters per line, and it runs on 5 volts, so it could be powered through the Uno. Now this is the LCD 1602, and it incorporates an Hitachi HD44780 display driver. Now these displays have been around for a while. They're just your basic display. And they're pretty inexpensive. I got this one online for about five dollars. If you look up top here, you can see an interface connection used to read or write to the display, and they're labeled from one to sixteen. Now, if your display doesn't have the backlight option, there'll only be fourteen pins, and they'll be labeled one to fourteen. Okay, here's a pinout diagram showing the interface connection on the LCD sixteen zero two display. Now, just to keep it simple. I'm just going to show the pins needed to write characters to the display. So the first thing we see here is a data bus. That's D0 to D7, and that's on pin 7 to 14. Now this is where we apply the ASCII data of the character to be sent to the display. So for instance, if we wanted to send the string hello world to the display, the first thing we would do is send the character H, a capital H. Now the ASCII value for capital H is 48 hex. And in binary, that's 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. That would be applied to the data bus. And then we apply a positive going pulse to pin 6. That's the enable pin. And on the trailing edge of that pulse, the character H will be clocked into the display. Now while this is happening, pin 5 will be low, because we're writing to the display. And pin 4 will be high. That's a register select, because we're sending data to the display. We're sending ASCII characters. Now we continue this on with the rest of the string, hello world. Now if you want to send a command into the, into the display, we would set pin 4 low, and that would go into the command mode. Now we could home the display, we could clear the display, we could uh, move the cursor around. So we would send the data command into the, into the data bus, and pulse pin 6, and on the leading edge, the command will be taken into the display. Okay, the setup shown here takes a lot of GPIO from the microcontroller. So to reduce the count on the GPIO pins, we could, we could use the 4-bit mode. Now in 4-bit mode, we don't use D0 to D3 on the data bus. So to send the character H, we would do it in two steps. First of all, we would send a 4, a binary 4, 0, 1, 0, 0, and put that into the high nibble of the data bus, and then pulse pin E with a positive going pulse. Then we would send 8. 1, 0, 0, 0, and put that into the high nibble, and then pulse pin 6. So it takes two steps to send one character, but we gain four GPIO pins. Whenever I get involved with the project, we have to control a piece of hardware with a microcontroller, like the display in this case, I like to do it interactively with the keyboard. This way I get instant feedback from the device, and I can exercise all the functions of the hardware using the keyboard. Now this technique lets you get very familiar with the workings of the hardware and I do this before I start writing code. So when I do start writing code I know it's going to work. And I use the fourth programming language to do this. And you can see here I program two fourth words and I pronounce them two data and two command. Now in the word two data if I type a value on the keyboard from 0 to 255 and then type two data that will send that ASCII character to the display. So now I could exercise all the ASCII codes from 0 to 255 with the keyboard. Similar with the to command, I could enter any value, command value, and then type to command, and that will execute the command on the display. Now the difference between these two words is the way pin 4 is configured on the display. So when I use the word to data, pin 4 will be high, and if I use the word to command, pin 4 will be low. Now to even make it easier, I've written this little program here, so I have a, a begin again loop, so this is an infinite loop that goes back between the begin and the gain. And in between there I have the word key, which takes the uh, keystroke from the keyboard and gives the ASCII value to the word to data. So that way every time I press a key on the keyboard, it will send that ASCII code to the display. Okay, my display is powered up. I home the cursor and I cleared the screen. And I have a little program running that takes the ASCII key press data from the keyboard and sends it to the display. So if I hit any key, hitting some numbers, hit some letters, and I can backspace. Now when I come to the end of the first line, I'll go to the second line. 
I'm going to come down to the second line. We'll go to the first line. So you can see here I can send any ASCII code that my keyboard is capable of sending. And I can send it to the screen for testing. So that's how I control my display interactively. So next we'll look at some screen commands. So I'll send a shift display right. You can see the display shifting to the right. And I can go left. I can home the cursor to line 1. I can home the cursor to line 2. I can blink the cursor. There's the cursor blinking. I can turn it off. So there's an example of some commands that we can send to the screen through the keyboard. Okay, this is my setup. This is my UNO board, which is driving my LCD 1602 display. Now there's only four wires in between the UNO board and the display. A 2 or power, plus 5 volts in ground. Another two is an I2C link. Because on the back of my display, there's an I2C piggyback board, which you see here, which takes I2C signals from the UNO, which goes through this board and drives the display. Now this chip here is a PCF 8574, which gives the UNO eight more GPIO lines. And with those eight lines and the display running in 4-bit mode, it can control the display with only two wires coming out of the UNO. So there's a lot of fancy displays out there. There's touchscreen displays, there's OLED displays. But if you need something simple and cheap, this might be the solution for your project.